Oh yeah. So. There we go. It's the Andrew Christopher the Show. With Andrew Christopher, your ho ho ho. Andrew Christopher the show The Billy we call it the AC show Yeah we really really call it the AC show Billy really really call it the AC show It's the AC show Oh it's the AC show with AC your host check it out What's up you guys episode 15 can you believe it? I hope I'm right on that. Um, we're going to be announcing the winner of my Basic Hose, Basic Bros contest to see who gets to be on the show with me as a guest in person, sitting right beside me. So that's exciting. I'm going to try calling them. I didn't give them a heads up, um, but the votes are counted. And so we'll call, see if they answer. If they do, awesome. Otherwise, I'll leave a voicemail and then we'll get that set up and uh, get him in studio. And I didn't say him or her. Could be either still. We don't know yet. And um, after that, we're going to be uh, talking a bit, do some family time stuff, talking about uh, overusing personal technology devices, which I heard a great speaker talk about last night at my gig. And it really, uh, really reminded me to um, to try and cut back a bit. And he had some great pointers. I was trying to to get him on the show and hopefully in the future we'll be able to but um for now I'm just going to kind of lightly touch on it and a bit to do with kind of within the family kids and spouses and relationships and how uh we need to be watching how much we're on our phones mostly and that kind of thing um first I wanted to point out a few things about the studio here I don't know if many of you guys noticed the posters are still not up um and for our Spotify or Apple podcast listeners um i was i had some posters up behind on this nice wall why we rearranged the studio this way and they're still not up we had them taped up and then they fell down we've got a lot going on around the house um jamie's uh off work now she's got a rest um she's 32 weeks and um i guess she has a short cervix um for those of you who are well-versed in female anatomy and knows what goes on during pregnancy. There's a lot of talk around the house these days about, uh, I don't even want to talk about it. It makes me feel kind of awkward. Um, discharges, bleeding, exams of all sorts. And yeah, it's part of life, but it's kind of a gross part of life. <laughs> so, so yeah, the, uh, the posters still haven't made their way up permanently onto the wall um another thing i realized uh because i'm just learning doing these podcasts still getting some reps in and so i had my big acoustic guitar on the wall beside me on my hanging guitar stand for the last episode and uh you could actually really hear the extra reverberation coming from the guitar just from me talking here so i would be talking and it would be echoing out of the guitar so on the last episode, you probably hear, well, you probably didn't, but if you listened closely enough, you could hear some extra reverb on my voice, and, and that's why. So I put the little ukulele back up there for now. And um, lastly, I don't know if we talked about the, the plant here yet, Jamie's plant. My wife's a big um, plant lady. It's kind of her crazy cat thing, even though now we have two cats. Um, so we're already turning into the crazy cat people, but... Uh, crazy plant lady I would say I don't know if this one has a name um, I don't mind it here so thank you for this one Jamie but um, the house is starting to get a little jungle-ish and she always points out she's like oh maybe we need to get a new one um, maybe we need to get something for for the bathroom or for the bedroom and I'm like babe chill out on the plants but uh and one of them died well but she's hanging on to it I don't know what's going on. Um, and she names them. The one on the patio is Roxy. I've always assumed that one's dead. It looks dead. Um, and then uh, 
This one was in the living room, and I guess the cats and the kids kept knocking leaves off. And if you knock a leaf off this plant, it's like done for. Um, its name's Charlie, and uh, no idea what kind of plant it is. Don't ask me. But she's got it in our bathroom right now, trying to trying to steam it back to life or something. It says it it likes the moisture in the air when we take hot showers, and it hasn't worked yet though. It's still not growing anything. So, um, yeah, I think Charlie's uh, had its time. I guess that'd be a good present I could get her. Oh yeah, there we go. She wanted a push present. Have you guys heard of these? So, um, guys out there, if your um, wife or girlfriend or girl you met at the bar is pregnant um, <laughs> and uh, she's going to want a push present, I guess it's the latest craze um, because they do all this hard work, which, yes, of course it is. So you got to buy them something nice um, for, for while they're pushing. I don't know if you're supposed to give it to them like, in the moment so they're like oh this is awesome and forget about the pain or if you wait till after it's done she didn't really specify but i'll figure it out maybe a new charlie that might be a nice one but i guess now she's probably watching this so it won't be much of a surprise but anyway there's a few notes about the studio for you kind of got sidetracked there a little bit but um i think it's 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 the moment of truth here we're gonna call the winner who got the most votes. Um, thank you to everybody who did participate. It was fun. And uh, sorry, I can't have you all on here. I actually probably could. Maybe I will. But <laughs> Or you could enter the contest again if you really want to be on it. Um, and you just have to step your game up a, get, a bit. Um, and this was surprising um, to me, actually. Um, I'm still not going to say it yet. I'm just going to call. And that's how you guys will find out. So let's see. Maybe she'll answer. If not, you'll hear on the voicemail. And here's the winner. Coming up. Call. Let's see. Who's it going to be? Dan Stone? Lindsay? Jason? Kim? Nicola? Tara? It's still ringing. Is the suspense killing you? Hopefully they have a voicemail. Hey, it's Nicola. Just leave me a message and it's I'll Nicola. try to get back to you as soon as I can. The mukbang. After leaving a message, you can hang up or press so pound stoked. for more options. Nicola, it's Andrew Christopher, the host of the AC show. And you are the winner of the first Basic Hose, Basic Bros contest. And we're going to mukbang it up with all your awkward questions, um, eat a bunch of food, and uh, I'm stoked to have you. Sorry I didn't get to you on the line. Um, I just wanted to make it a surprise. So uh, you could feel free. Give me a call back if you get this in the next 20 minutes, and I'll still probably be on uh, filming the podcast. So, yeah, congratulations. Um, I can't wait to stuff my face and answer all your in-depth questions. Okay, peace out. So there you have it. It's going to be a, a ginger mukbang. Um, and if you don't know what that is, you should look it up. It's uh, one of the most popular videos on YouTube. Um, not the ginger part, but the mukbang or whatever, however you pronounce it. I'll figure it out for that show at least. So we're going to have Nicola come in here. Um, she's always great at asking really, uh, really good questions. Sometimes a bit too personal um, or sometimes just really great in-depth questions that make you think. And, uh, and yeah, we're going to do the mukbang, which is eating a bunch of food, talking to each other, and uh, that might gross you out, but maybe you're into that, so we'll see. Anyway, um, congratulations, Nicola. Can't wait to have you in here. Moving along, it is now time for... Family time, family time, ooh, 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 it's family time. It's family time! Woo! Yeah! Um, so as I said, we are uh, going to talk a bit about cell phones, iPads, uh, Netflix, and all that good stuff. Um, I was uh, 
at work last night in Vancouver at the Terminal City Club uh, singing some tunes. And the keynote speaker there, his name was Steve Rio. And he's the founder of a company called The Nature of Work. And uh, they kind of focus on <laughs> focus in the workplace and uh, making sure everyone's um, making the best of their time and and in the best frame of mind to do the work so that it, and he spoke to the safety of of being present um, because last night's gala was uh, the pinnacle safety awards or something something like that anyway so he kind of moved it towards there but he's he's really his company is based to to help um, people prioritize um, whether it's in everyday life or in big companies like that and make sure they're they're working to their full potential and uh, it was really interesting stuff um, he uh, talked a lot about obviously cell phones and and the uh, the negative impact that they can have um, mentally and uh, not just on you know not just to do with depression or whatever but um, you know on your cognitive abilities uh, really interesting stuff I was I'm hoping that maybe I'll be able to set up a phone call with him one day and, uh, you know, get him to explain a bit better what he does and, and how it can help, um, people live a better life, a more fulfilled life, help them prioritize and, uh, yeah, try and kick this habit that a lot of people have of being on their phones too much. So we'll see if we can get him on the show. He, uh, cause he, he lives on Bowen Island at least half the time, I'm guessing. He says he's in between there and New York a lot. I guess he does a lot of business in Vancouver and New York. But, um, yeah, he would be a really interesting guy to have on here. So hopefully we can set that up. But um, I was just going to talk a bit about how I felt after hearing what he said because it's always a big thing between Jamie and I about how much we're on our phones or how much the kids are on the iPads. And I think it's it's big in every family. Um, oh, hold that thought. <laughs> Nicola! Oh, hi! How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Did you check your voicemail? No. No? Oh, no. well, you win. You're the winner. I did? You won. I won, I won the mukbang? Yeah, well, you won the Basic Hoes and Basic Bros contest. Oh, um, good, because I was, I was so worried because I don't have social media, so I, I didn't know how that would this, play out. <laughs> I know. This is why it was very surprising to me, too. But uh, you, no, no, don't be surprised. Well, just because of the social media thing, right? So Yeah, I didn't. I thought I had, I, well, no, I didn't think I wouldn't win. But no. I thought, oh, my God, everyone's going to do this on social media, and I'm just going to not. No, well, I, I, can oh. hear, I can hear the excitement in your voice. Um, I know, but are you excited? I am excited because okay, I've got some really good questions. And and you said maybe we're going to be doing shots and uh, and eating Cakes. a lot of food. Um, yeah, I just I feel like some questions might you might it, a little be out of your comfort zone. So yeah. that I figure if you don't want to answer one, right, you could take a shot. Okay, but yeah, um, yeah no, that's totally fine. I okay, I will do that. Um, okay, but, when is this happening? Well, we'll have to talk. We'll have to get our people to to talk to your people and, and see when we can schedule it. Okay, no, that sounds good. But I need you to keep this close to your chest because oh, um, okay. it's it's a surprise. So people aren't going to know until Sunday, okay? Like oh, until they're watching better. this. Okay, So okay. Don't, don't tell anybody. So I have to play coy and not... Especially at Dan's party on Saturday. Well, I was going to say I'm going to see Dan <laughs> no, this weekend you got it. at his birthday. And so, everybody's okay. going to be asking and I'm going to be saying, no, you got to wait for the episode to come out, Okay. Oh, okay, but I'm a horrible liar, but I'll try my best. Yeah, well, you just just walk away. Just go to the bathroom or something. Okay, sounds okay. good. I'll walk away. Um, okay, awesome. Cool, I'm excited. Yes, me too. I'll, uh, okay. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks, Andrew. Okay, bye. Goodbye. Oh, that worked out so perfectly. Um, she called back. She didn't even know, so I got to surprise her again. Oh, that's cool. Anyway, where was I? Um, talking about screen time. Um within your family, with your kids, or, you know, even if you're not married, if you don't have kids, just between you and your, your girlfriend, a significant other, or just yourself, trying to keep yourself in check. Um, I just started looking at this on my smartphone. Um, I've got an iPhone, and uh, it's got a great database about how much you're on 
your phone, what apps you're using, how many times you pick it up a day, how many notifications you're getting. And uh, so it's a super easy way to keep yourself um, keep yourself in check with how much you're on your phone. And uh, so here's, I'll read you some of my stats. So it, and it keeps it like up to the minute. So today when I looked at 1230, um, I had already been on my phone an hour and 44 minutes. Um, and that's split up into social media for 26 minutes, entertainment for seven minutes and productivity for 40 minutes. So at least I'm using it productively, I guess. <laughs> um, and that was already 54 minutes below my average. So you can tell that speech last night really hit home and I am going to try and be on my phone less. So, but I'll read you some from the last week, which will be a bit more accurate and kind of averaging out a full day of how much I'm on my phone. And those numbers are, um, on average in a day, it's three hours and 48 minutes, which was 34% down from last week. And again, this is all numbers you get. Anybody who has got an iPhone, and I'm sure the uh, Androids and stuff have a similar, a similar app or whatever. Um, and it's built into the phone. Like you don't need to download anything. So you can check these out. And uh, interesting one that I I saw was pickups. So it says per day I pick up my phone 147 times on average. So I'm guessing that's like it can sense right when you pick it up and kind of look at it. It knows and it opens the screen for you or whatever. Um, and on Monday, I did it 207 times. So just think about that. And it breaks it down for you. It tells you how many per hour you do and everything. Um, and then it tells you notifications per day. I had uh, 123 notifications per day. So one thing I did to try and keep me from looking on my phone so much was I put it always on do not disturb. So, so I don't, I don't feel or hear any notifications, but I think I thought that would make me not check my phone as much, but I think it makes me check my phone more because I'm like, Oh, somebody has got to have messaged me by now. So I pick it up and look or something or, Oh, must've got an Instagram message and, um, or a like on my Facebook post. And so I check it, pick it up and look, and usually there's no notifications because I guess I'm not that popular. But so it was a good intention, but I don't I don't think it worked. Now I'm just happy having it off so it doesn't buzz all the time or whatever. Um, but one thing uh, Steve brought up, he said there's been studies done that even if you don't have your phone, if you're not looking at it or reading the messages, if it's beside you on your desk um, and the notifications are going off, he says productivity in the workplace goes down because you're kind of thinking about oh, who messaged me or who liked my post or what's going on? And it's obviously a distraction. So even if you're not looking at your phone, you're hearing these notifications buzz and everything, and it's, it's in your head subliminally. Um, so yeah, he talked on that, and it was, it was really interesting. But anyway, for me, so I get these notifications. I'm still looking at it just as much. Well, as you saw, I only get 123 notifications a day, but I'm picking up my phone 150 times. So... So I'm picking it up more than the notifications I get, which I guess is normal. Sometimes you use your phone for other things. But um, anyway, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been something I've been, I've been thinking about over the past couple of years probably, but never really put anything into action. I have gotten better because, you know, Jamie called me out and said, you know, you're on your phone a lot. Try and put it down, um, using a lot of data. And uh, so I feel like I've done a bit of my part. I'm still going to try and get that down because um, another thing Steve said was, he, I think he said the average um, is three hours per day that people are on their phone. And obviously, I think that's already high, um, especially in his eyes and the work that he does. Um, but that's the average. And so last week, I was on it three hours and 50 minutes a day. So I'm above that average. So I think I'm going to try and get it down to at least that average, um, which might be as easy as just remembering to lock my phone. Cause I don't know how it tracks it, but I think that might help anyways. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try and get down to that average. Maybe you guys should look into it. Join me, try and get down to at least three hours. And if you're below it, good for you. Um, but I'm sure you think, uh, there's probably ways you could be on it a bit less too. Um, and 
you know, especially for the families out there, it's, uh, um, I think it's important to, to think about, you know, when you're on your phone, um, when your kids are around or whatever, and, uh, and start prioritizing, like, well, obviously putting your kids first. I don't doubt that any of you, um, are doing that, but I think it's so easy to sometimes be caught up in your phone, <laughs> your kids are playing or asking you questions and, and, uh, you kind of brush it off and say, okay, yeah, give me a minute or whatever, just cause you're on your phone on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. And I mean, how fucking stupid is that? Like you're just creeping people's pics and you ask your kids to, to give you a minute so that you can finish doing, um, doing nothing essentially. Um, so I know that's a big thing that, that Steve promotes is prioritizing your life again. You know, if your kids are asking for something or if your kids are up playing, why aren't you up playing with them? Yeah. Okay. We get it. You're tired. You need some downtime, but does that downtime need to be on your phone or can it at least be a bit more present with your kids? You can still be having downtime and they're playing around you. Um, anyway, a few kind of, kind of thoughts there for you. Um, and, uh, it's, um, yeah, it, it's a tough thing, uh, to wrap your head around, I think, um, because I do, and it is, um, a form of addiction. And so it's tough to really accept when you're addicted to something. Um, the first kind of step, like they always say is admitting it. And, um, I know, uh, yeah, my, my sister, Michelle, who I really want to have on the show, who's a drug addict, drug addict. And, um, She's uh, been clean over five years now. So it was something I wanted to talk to her about as well. It was kind of phone addiction and how she can see it relating to drug addiction and that kind of thing. I think that could be a really cool conversation because um, it is. It's an addiction. So you don't even know that that you're on it too much. You don't know that it's actually um, hampering relationships with friends and family. Um, and this is one of the ones I'm worst at is uh, talking to I can remember the other day at lunch talking to my sister and I'm uh, refreshing my the score mobile app to check the score in the hockey game or whatever when I'm having a conversation with my sister or I think I am but really I'm not invested in that conversation in that relationship if I'm flicking through my phone and then people make up the excuse of uh, oh I can multitask or whatever but for me I know I can't so that's bullshit for myself and uh, I don't think it's um, I don't think it's right or I don't think it's true for anybody that you can multitask and hold a conversation while being on your phone. It's, um, you're losing that connection, um, with, with the person you're supposed to be talking to. There's a connection that, that you're supposed to be having. And if you're on your phone, your phone is taking away from that connection and there's no denying that. So that's, that's something, um, easy for me that I'm going to work on is, uh, being present, looking you in the eye and, uh, staying off my fucking phone. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I've, if I've done that to you. Um, it is, it's part of an addiction. You don't even think about it. You just grab your phone, look, maybe you're checking the time and then you got a, you've got a notification and you open it up. And then next thing you know, 20 minutes has gone by and you've done nothing. And, uh, and then like other addictions, afterwards I know sometimes I feel like shit I'm like wow I just wasted 20 minutes on my phone when I could have been editing the podcast or I could have been writing a song or something like that um so yeah there's definitely you can draw those parallels between drug addiction and alcohol and um and just being on your phone too much and for the kids um these iPads and stuff and now a lot of kids are getting phones younger and younger um but even just the iPads I think it's, uh, it's the same thing. Like it's going to take over their lives and video games. This is another subject that Steve touched on. Um, it's taking away that interaction with human beings, with their brothers and sisters or with kids at school. Um, they're not, uh, I don't think they're learning the same skills as kids had been, you know, maybe when I was younger or the generation even before me, um, with, you know, making friendships and, and being able to uh, express their emotions properly because they're so just in tune with these screens. Um, and again, I'm guilty of it, giving kids the iPad so that I can have some free time or whatever. 
but it's, um, comes down to that prioritizing. And I think there's a healthy amount. Kids can still watch cartoons and that kind of stuff, but, um, just needs to be tracked better. And again, with that app, it's, um, it's great. I think I just saw that you can set it up as a family. You can all keep track of how much you've been on your phones and stuff. And, um, (laughs) so I think I'm going to call Jamie out on it and see if I can get her on board, but I think that'll be a tough battle. Um, she says she's looked at it, but I was like, have you really looked at it to see how much you're on and are you decreasing? Are you increasing? Um, Jamie uses a lot of data. We've got six gigs and it's usually five gigs for her and one for me. Um, that doesn't mean she's on her phone more, but, but, um, I am going to call her out, I think, and we'll see how that goes. I'll let you know next episode, but, (laughs) um, it's something I think that'll help. It'll help our relationship. I know it will. If we're on our phone less talking to each other more. Um, Jamie's good at still talking on the phone. Um, I can, (laughs) I can hear her right now. She's on a phone call. Um, so that's great. I don't talk on the phone that much. Um, I do text a ton. So maybe that's, I can meet her in the middle. I'll start talking on the phone more, texting less. Um, and she can just in general be on her phone less. You know, I think for her, it's more the apps and she does a lot of online shopping or online selling and that kind of stuff. And I can kind of understand that, but there's still a lot of just scrolling, flicking with your thumb or whatever. And, uh, yeah, so I think there's some compromises, and I'm sure you can think about them um, if you're in a relationship where you can say, okay, maybe I'll do this less, you do that less. We'll have more time together to talk, to cuddle, to uh, do whatever, get outside, go for a walk, play with the kids. Um, yeah, there's, I think there's benefits, uh, benefits to it, of course, um, undoubtedly. So something to think about, you guys. And, and um, yeah, I will uh, try and let you know over the next week, see if my screen time has gone down. I do a lot of work, obviously, promoting the show, promoting um, my music gigs, or uh, interacting with people. Um, a lot of my business is online, but um, I still just mess around on there too, right? So it's, even if, if you do say that, you know, you got to do it for work, like me, um, there's room to scale it back. There's a healthy amount to be, to be doing, and and then you need to um, you need to book that time to really connect with people, not just emails or text messages, phone calls, you know, meet up for coffee, that kind of thing. It's something I can be better at for sure. I think I've said that like ten times, so obviously <laughs> there's a lot that I can be better at. <laughs> um, oh, there you go. One last thing I can be better at: being on your phone while driving. Again, usually for me, it's checking scores in, in sports, sports games or if, uh, you know, if I'm on the way to a gig and forgot to post about the gig, promoting it or something, stupid stuff like that, right? Or texting. I do it sometimes too. Um, and another commitment I'm making to you guys, I'll be on my phone a lot less while driving. So call me if you need to because I'm not going to be texting anymore. Anyway, I think that's, that's about all I had to say about that. Um, and I'm hoping that Steve, if you watch this, I'm going to send you this video, Steve. And, and I hope you'll agree to, uh, to take a phone call at least. Um, so you can kind of clarify all this, all this, uh, jumbled message I was trying to get across. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, I think it's a great thing that you're trying to promote. So, um, so thanks for the work that you're doing. It's very important, especially to families. Um, and I think it's important to humanity to keep connecting with people instead of these handheld devices that we that we do so much um anyway so thanks guys i know this was kind of a quick one but uh i um i gotta take my wife to an appointment i'm not gonna say what it is i told her i was gonna call her out on it but i won't because i love you babe and um I think next week we're going to be doing, well, unless we get this set up with Nicola quickly, I think next week I'm going to be doing my second artist showcase. I'm hoping my friend Kyler Pierce can come out, um, amazing musician, and uh, we'll talk to him a bit about songwriting and uh, recording and play a couple of his tunes. So music fans, watch out for that one. Um, If you guys know of anyone who might be interesting in sponsoring a podcast like this, uh, getting in on on the ground floor 
for a little bit of extra advertising, then send them my way. Send them a link to the show. Uh, pass them along my my info, and uh, I'd love to talk to them. But that's been great, guys. Hope you had fun. And um, take care of each other, hey? Give someone a hug today. There's my challenge to you. And be on your phone less. Okay, bye. It's the Andrew Christopher Show. With Andrew Christopher, your host. It's the Andrew Christopher Show. The Billy we call it the AC Show. Yeah, we really, really call it the AC Show. Really, really, really call it the AC Show. It's the AC Show. Oh, it's the AC Show with AC, your host. Check it out.